Um, welcome to the Yarn Waffle Podcast. I am Liz Ward. I'm a crochet designer living in York with my cat Cal. And um, yeah, this is my little podcast, a very new little podcast where I chat about all the things I've been knitting, crocheting, not so much, but you know, and uh, yeah, I've been away for a while. I had the dreaded cold and just everything with Christmas was just, yeah. It is what it is, but I decided to come back and um, film a slightly different episode today because I'm not doing the normal format of what I've finished, what I'm working on and sort of acquisitions and chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take you through everything that I have on the needles or hooks at the moment. Be warned, there's not a lot of crochet. There's very little crochet at the moment. My crochet mojo tends to take a dip in December I think it's mainly because I've been it's my job and I have been working on Christmas crochet since June or July sometimes even from Easter I can be working on Christmas so by the time it gets to that time of the year my crochet mojo just goes out of the window and I want to knit all the things and I am knitting all the things <laughs> but usually when it gets to January it starts to sort of peak again the work starts coming in and I start to feel a bit more of a happy crocheter and I'm already sort of starting the, the, cog, the cogs are wearing away in my head and I'm having lots of ideas and lots of new projects that will be coming up soon I'm very excited about so there is definitely going to be a lot more crochet content in the upcoming episodes um, but yeah so we are on episode 11 it is Friday the 3rd of January 2020 I can't believe it's 2020 oh my god um, yeah, it's it's a lovely, bright, crisp day outside. I'm in my studio, um, and I suppose we should get cracking. We'll probably get an intro. Probably get a right word. It's not going to come. Yeah, well, I'm sure Cal will come in at some point. She's currently asleep on my bed, uh, but once she hears me talking, she'll want to know what's going on. Um, uh, there will be a small update about um, a new co-host, kitten. Um, later on in the podcast as well I have a picture because um yeah my new kitten has been born so that's very exciting and I'll put a picture um if I get a chance to talk about it at the end I'll put it there if not I'll put it here because I'm like anyway 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 let's crack on with all the whips right okay so if you can see this mound here this is literally all of them um and this is includes any sort of um unfinished objects or things that have been hibernating for a long time but we're just going to go through them and see um, and this is my floof hunter bag and this is by Yana Story um, I got this bag from Yarndale last year God, it was last year already um, and yeah I love this bag uh, I wanted it for so long when I saw it I was just so excited um, and in this bag are two um, pairs of socks that I'm working on at the moment they are vanilla socks and um, they are both out of the um, Crazy Zalba Ball. I'm sure you guys have seen this yarn before. It's a German brand yarn. It's a fractal plied gradient and it comes in a million and one different colours. So this one is nearly finished and it is the second sock. Uh, this is a sample for uh, Dutton's Buttons, the shop that I work at. Um, they already have the first sample up and they if you buy a ball of this wool at Dutton's you get a free simple sock pattern which is this pattern which I have written and will eventually go up on Ravelry as a free download I just haven't got around to it yet but it's a really nice free pattern it's um, pretty much standard 64 stitches 2.25 needle and um, you've got a 2x2 two two cuff short row heel and it has um, a rounded toe, which obviously I haven't got to yet because I'm just in this fantastic sort of bright red section here. Does this not remind you of a peacock? I've heard lots of different people saying, like some people say it reminds them of like tropical fish, but for me it's all very peacocky. It's very beautiful. So yeah, so that's one in here. Oh, excuse me. The other one in here is, again, um the Zalba ball. There is one finished sock in this incredible sort of tonal blue, grey and red. I don't actually know the colour names for these. 
Um, they are the colour names are in German, um, and we get them out at the shop as just a random mixed bag. What I've actually done with this one because um, because this is a gradient. Sometimes, if you do a short row heel, you are going to get like a little line across there. Can you see that line? So what I did with this one when I was doing the short row heel is I just wound off a bit of the same wool and did the heel in that. That, that sounds very basic, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I wound off a smaller ball of the same wool and I did the heel. So even though you get lines here and here, this gradient on the top flows completely straight down. And isn't that pretty? And I was actually knitting these on Christmas Day, so I think these will go into my Christmas box of socks. They are for me. I've done a bit of a short cuff on here, mainly because I was being lazy. But yeah, I really like these. The colours kind of remind me, they kind of look Christmassy, but also they kind of look very Game of Thrones Winterfell. What do you think? If you're a Game of Thrones fan, let me know. Yeah, and um, these are a whip because the second one is on the needles and just about ready to go into the heel on this one. So these won't take long to finish. You can see because the gradients, I mean, they look very different, but they're going to be really cute when they're together and I'm really happy with those. Uh, also in this bag I have some amazing little stitch markers. I, um, I'm i not going to be doing a, a yarn haul, although there was quite a lot sort of that came in over the Christmas um, period. But And I also got my fibre share pa package, which the yarn for is just here. Um, and yeah. And one of the things that um, she had made for me, um, if you're watching the podcast, you know we lost Cassie, my lovely cat. Um, and she made these stunningly beautiful stitch markers um, and a progress keeper. And they're sort of based on the colours of Cassie's fur and her eye colour. And oh my god, I just cried buckets when I saw them. But they're so beautiful. And thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I might talk about that fibre share experience more in a different podcast. But I think we have a lot to get through in this one. So let's crack on. Okie doke. Um, we'll go for this bag next. This is one of the first project bags I made for myself, just faffing about really. And it's more socks in here, so that's very simple to get on with. Um, so yeah, I recognise these socks. I haven't worked on them for a while. They are in an opal yarn. It's an opal sport. And this was one that I purchased from the Yarn Makery. So it's over a year old because unfortunately that shop's not there anymore, which is very sad. Um, and all the information's on there, so I'm sure if you wanted to find this colour where you could. But yeah, it's striping up really nice. This is um, was hibernated because I started working on Christmas socks because I am doing a box of 24 Christmas socks, um, which I'm hoping to have finished by the end of this year. Which might be a slightly crazy plan, but we got a lot done last year. Um, but it'll be nice to have a break and work on some different socks. So these will be going back into rotation very soon. And the other thing in here is a ball of this yarn. This was from a mystery box from Gamer Crafting. Really like this yarn. And um, th this is a sock that was finished and I never even cast on the second one. So this is just a single sock and the second one needs to be cast on. So I'm going to put this finished sock in here so I can make them to match. And yeah, oh, there was a big bang outside there. Did you hear that? I think there might be something going on at the school. So more socks. Okay, while I'm on socks, I do have this long sock snake. Um, yeah, I knit this a while ago to use up. Some yarn by the Yarn Badger, and this is the sci fi, yeah, Yarn, ba yarn, yarn Badger yarn in the self striping colourway, and it's the sci fi colourway. And I got this at the Wool Monty in Sheffield last year. And this keeps following me around because I know I have to turn it into socks. It currently has a toe and a heel that needs to be redone because, yeah, yeah. But I have misplaced the navy yarn that I have used for this heel. So 
it doesn't matter if I use a different colour for the heel and then a different colour for the cuffs that might be a, that might be a way forward but I keep just sort of taking this to from project bag to project bag so that I remember it needs to be done and in the hope I will go on a search for the navy and sort it out but yeah this is this is a project that could be finished incredibly quickly if I just um, worked on it okay so we'll get the next one out of the way which is a biggie So this has been shown on the podcast before um, and it is my, let's get it the right way around, easy one by Hokey Locatelli. So this is a large boxy sweater, it's going to blow it out so quite a lot so I'll just hide behind so I don't look like very pale and yucky. Um, yeah, it's a large boxy sweater, I am using a black fingering weight yarn with a mohair held so it's all of the fluffies. And I am currently about two thirds, maybe, down the um, first sleeve. Uh, it has these exposed seams that you can see, which are really nice. And yeah, not far along with this. Um, it could have been worked on more, but a lot of this body I was working on just after we, I lost Cassie. And, you know, it kind of felt like there was a lot of sadness in it. So I didn't particularly want to pick up something black to work on. Um, and so it got hibernated for a little bit, but it's back on the needles now and I, whenever I just want some stocking it <coughs> in the round, um, I'm working on these sleeves and um, yeah, so I'm, the sleeves are worked on a circular, don't ask me the cable length because that's not, 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 not good at working that out. As I said before, one of these days I will put a chart up on the studio wall with all the lengths on and I can just be like, look how clever I am, I know all the cable lengths, but at the moment that's a big no. So yeah, I've got my little black sheep from the corner of craft on there, from Hannah. And yeah, this won't take long to finish, just a couple of good, good long movies and uh, I'll have a finished sweater. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Da, 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 da. What's in this bag? So this bag is another bag I made myself. This was the first prototype um, for the uh, Cassie bags. The Cassie bags. Um, the Cassie bags are now available, they're in my Etsy shop which is Amigurami Balmy. I'm sure I've put all the social media stuff on the screen somewhere because I have completely forgotten to say it all. Um, yeah, they're all available to pre-order. The first lot have sold out and there is the second lot out there and everybody who ordered the first one has now received it and thankfully they're all very loved. Um, so yeah, if you're wanting a Cassie bag to help um, support me, this podcast and um, getting our, our new little co-host, um, yeah, that's what that is for. And, um, hmm. So what's in here? It's another pair of socks. You're not surprised. I know you're not surprised. I knit a lot of socks. Okay, this is the Scatterby socks. Um, and this is a free pattern by Amy Stringer. You can find this on Ravelry. It's a really nice pattern. Um, it's mainly with slip stitches. And... I am on the first sock and I have just passed the heel. This yarn is by Ducky Darlings, the lovely Hayley, and um, this is her Chris one of her Christmas colourways in the Paper Chains colourway. And she sent me this little lovely mini to go with it. It's so pretty, I love it. Um and this is one of her stitch markers from one of her mystery clubs as well. So yeah, I am in the middle of the row on this. This is, I think there was a reason. I think it's because it's difficult to tell what row you're on when you leave it. But if I, if I worked a few stitches of the row, I could sort of think, oh yeah, I did that. And that's the row I'm on. So I'm fairly sure that was the reason I left this in the middle of the row. Again, it's just um, 
2.25 millimeter needles this time I'm using Knit Pro um, Knit Pro Novas don't know I have nothing to tell me but yeah I'm just going to give you another close-up of this because this stitch pattern is absolutely incredible it looks like honeycomb and it really shows off the yarn absolutely beautifully sorry about the ridiculously long nails I should have cut them this morning I love this. Um, this is a pattern that does require a little bit of thought, so it's not a mindless knit, but it's been a very enjoyable one. Um, and I don't think it will be long before these are finished because I do keep picking them up. Is that all the socks I have on the needles? Surely there's more. Surely. Um, okay. This one's sort of gone off to the side, so I'll grab this one next. Um, another sweater. A sweater I haven't touched for... Probably since I started doing the podcast. That's bad, isn't it? Gosh. Um, yes. Something just fell on the floor. I'm not 100% sure what it is. And it, we're a bit of a tangle, so bear with. That yarn doesn't even belong in this bag, but never mind. Okay. I'm going to do this upside down so you can see the colour work nicely. This is the Novelli by Caitlin Hunter. And, yeah. I have stopped it just as I'm nearing the top of the back. It would not take an awful lot to finish this. I don't know why it's gone into hibernation. Um, I know I wasn't particularly happy with the yarn choice. The colour is perfect. I'm all over this. Oh, so pretty. Isn't it so pretty? But yeah, the actual yarn itself has a very strange, um, like spongy quality to it. It's kind of blowing out there, but it is a true mustard yellow. That's one of my stitch markers on there. Um, yeah, it's Sheepies, Sheepies uh, Metropolis, and, um, ooh, ooh, the light, the light's doing something weird. Can we see that? Sheepies Metropolis. But yeah, I mean, this is beautiful, and it's going to be incredible when it's finished, so I really need to get this out of hibernation. I think what I will do with this is I will take it downstairs with me so it's not hiding in the studio but actually somewhere where I can see it and want to work on it because yeah it, it won't be long now before it's spring and we'll start to want the sort of lighter knits so rather than knitting all the um big jumpers which is what I want to be doing because it's cold and I want that sort of comfort of cold uh, warm jumpers maybe I should start thinking about knitting stuff for the summer that I'll actually be able to wear in the summer might be an idea. Okay, right. I'd say we're reaching the end, but I think we're only about halfway. Okay, I'm back and um, I don't know which one to go to next. I'm going to choose this one because it has been shown on the podcast before. Again, this is another one of the prototype Cassie bags. I only get the prototypes. I will make myself a really nice one. Um, yeah this one has the handle slightly in the wrong place and I love this fabric I mean I'm this yellow and grey I'm all over this fabric it's so pretty okay so I need to show you the picture of this to make it easier to understand because it's a bit all over the place in the bag this is the fading point by Hokey Locatelli and it is a massive wrap shawl that is made of five different skeins and if you watched the last episode which was a long a while ago i mentioned that i was going to cast this on using a set of yarns i'd collected from my darling ducky darlings um and they had brought out a good life collection which is a 70s sitcom i love very much 
and um, yeah, so I, ha I had these five skeins and they were pastel colours that all had like a similar thing that links them, the speckles sort of link them together. Um, let me show you the yarn before I show you. So you can see some, so there's five all together, this is going to be incredibly difficult to hold them, but can you see how like the speckles sort of all tone and um, yeah, they're beautiful incredibly beautiful and that was based on the five main characters in the show um yeah so this is worked it's a big long wrap and it's worked end to end so you start here you work a bit then you change color and then you take that first color and you cast on another one which is this end and you work that bit there and then you bring in the second color when you finish the second color do the second colour on this bit till you meet in the middle and then it's got these V chevrons that you do which will use all the colours again really pretty so the first side this might be a bit difficult to show because it's on quite short needles for what it is so it's, it's garter and lace panels hands up I'm not really loving the lace it's fine it's just one of the rows in the chart is not very memorable mem memorizable memorable yeah and when it starts to be quite a lot of stitches it's a bit of a head scratcher because I just keep losing my way and having to think back um, and I yeah I don't know this year 2020 I have sort of decided to be my year of big projects and that's why I am doing these things which I know won't be finished overnight but I still like to knit fast so when I'm having to take things back and rearrange you know it's just something that makes me fall out of love a little bit but when you actually see the finished lace i think it's really pretty so you get these two wide lace sections and then these smaller ones here um and as you can see i've started with the blue which was the barbara colorway and then i've faded into the green which is tom who's barbara's husband and then i am just about into the lilac section which is margot which is the other wife in it and the other side I have only just reached um, but the part words words are hard um yeah I am at the point on the second piece where I'm about to start the se second big lace section and it's it's nice in a way because you've got two pieces going on at the same time so you're repeating each section which for me is good because I like to get something in my head then I know what I'm doing and then you know I can repeat it um, so that works but in the same time I know how tedious that lace section was last time and now I've got to do it again yeah so I'm currently very much enjoying doing the garter fade section on this side if I show you this properly um, so yeah it's fading in the next colour now it's so pretty I mean it's going to be absolutely incredible um, stitch marker on here is one of my stitch markers um, from time to time I have sets of stitch markers in my Etsy shop there is going to be a big stitch marker update very soon and these are also ones based of Game of Thrones so this is a star we've got a little sun with the blue crystal on and on this side I've got the Game of Thrones, can you see? Oh, it wants to focus on me, not this. Game of Thrones with a little black crystal on. And they're proper Swarovski crystals. Um, yeah, so that's just a, just a silly thing that I make from time to time and pop it in my Etsy shop. Um, so yeah, this is not something I am planning to finish anytime soon. It's a nice project because I have that choice of easy garter or a bit more thoughtful lace um, and it is very much crammed into this bag it definitely needs a bigger bag and I will be making some bigger bags soon definitely but yeah that is my fading point and I'm very much enjoying it 
Now then, the other pattern that I brought up is another very big project. And this is an all over cable pattern. It is the Auster and it's by, is this by, by Michelle Wong? I don't know if it actually has the name on it. It says it's by Brooklyn Tweed, but obviously that's just like a, a powerhouse designer sort of thing. I mean, and it's very much Brooklyn Tweed in its sort of choices. Um, so yeah, my best friend, um, Richard, I have wanted to knit him a jumper for years as a knitter and I have been able to knit him socks. I think he got scarves and a hat. It was gloves last year. And I was like, th th this year you kind of have to let me knit you a sweater. He's very knit worthy. He does wear all his knits. I think he has a scarf I made him 10 years ago that he still has and still uses. Um, so yeah, he's, he's very knit worthy. So get, getting a big sweater for him. It's a lot, but something I really want to do. And where is it? I can't, oh, it's in this bag, sorry. It's in my big sheepy bag, sorry for the rattling. I have a tub of stitch markers in here because I am currently making the sleeves and marking every time I do an increase. So yeah, this is my big sheepy bag by Mary Kilvert um, that I got a couple of Christmases ago from my sister. And I will take out the rattling. Now this pattern is knit flat. Um, it has recently been knit by Elliot Skandier and she knitted in the round and I was very tempted to follow her example and do that too. However, I didn't feel confident on an all over cable sort of winging it, if you know what I mean, because I'm not confident on this pattern. Anyway, it's a very, very big project for me. Um, but yeah, anyway, I am knitting it flat which is equally as scary as knitting something round as it's been an awful long time since I have knit anything flat. But it is on the needles. Ooh, okay, I'm, I'm making a hash of this because it's just literally twisted and... So I currently have both sleeves on the needles at the same time. I'm just going to put them together so you can see the two of them. And I am knitting this out of Drops Nepal, um, which is in an Aran weight, and it is a wool alpaca blend. It is incredibly economical in price, and it has that same sort of green heathered look of the Brooklyn Tweed, um, but about a tenth of the price, perhaps. And this, the sleeves are actually going to be the the reverse stockinette is going to be on the the um outside yeah i'm good at words today and what i did with this because he's a special friend he's lovely um i did learn to do a tubular cast on i'm going to hide so you can see it properly it goes all the way around look at that yes it took about three hours to do both sleeves Yes, it's going to take me a whole day when I actually cast on the body. Some people are worth it. Apparently there's like a bind off you can do as well to match, so I'm going to have to learn to do that when I do the neckband. But I am not expecting that to be any time soon. I think the sleeves will be pretty quick because they are just um, stocking it, reverse stocking it. Um, I think they have to be like massively long and then I do raglans and then I'm going to... I don't know whether to work the front and the back of the body flat but at the same time so on a big needle I might do that because at least then they'll grow at the same rate and you don't have that thing of I finished the front of the sweater it's taken me six months and now I have to do that again so in theory that's my plan once the sleeves are done I'll cast on the front and the back of the body yeah at the same time, I won't knit them in the round, I'll knit them flat, but I will knit them at the same time. So yeah, I'm going to put rattles back in the bag. So this is the second of my big sort of epic projects of 2020. Not expecting it to be finished. I would hope it would be finished by the end of the year. But it certainly won't be finished by the end of this winter. Okay. 
and there's still quite a lot in here fairly sure I've taken one out and not talked about it I have this is the third big project of the year and this will last the whole year because this is a Cozy Memories Mighty Square, Mitered Square Blanket, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that's looking so pretty on screen. Um, and I am going to knit a square a day of this. Um, and as you can see, it's the 3rd of January and I have more than three squares. And this is because I started this on Christmas Eve. Because I was having a moment and I realised that I wanted a 400 square blanket. And they're 360 four five days in a year I, I know things um Cal's just come in if you can hear a bell rattling she'll probably jump up on my knee in a minute um she really likes this blanket she thinks it's for her um yeah so I worked out that if I started five days before the end of the year that would give me 400 squares well everyone out there no that would give me 370 squares so what I've been trying to do is do a couple more... <laughs> why? Why? The maths just was not working. Cal? Can I say hello? Woo! No, you don't want to say hello really, do you? Are you right, boo? It's not a happy face. Okay, go, go over there then. You can sit on all the knits, I don't mind. Yeah, so I think I, I, I haven't counted how many squares I have got. What I've actually done is I have done out a little sort of graph here so you can see how far I've got to go. Um, and so I'm going to make a square of which is 10 by 10. Sorry if you're rattling slightly. It is Cal. You can see her tail's just here. Um, yeah, so each square I make will be 10 by 10 and then I'll be turning it and so the decrease line on all the squares will go will radiate from the center point and yeah I just ah oh, how pretty is that looking on screen the other thing I am doing with this is I uh, every other square is gray not necessarily in your face bright you know all the same it so every other square is gray uh, different tones of gray grays I've dyed grays I've picked up I will probably need lots more grey, um, so if you have any grey, five grams of grey yarn or anything, please, <laughs> I need all the greys, uh, but yeah, other than that, the actual sort of um, minis I think I'm okay with, I treated myself to some ones from Dye Candy, she's just released her like greatest kits mini skein sets, um, I don't know what all the names are, this one, this one was the mini that came with the Wham Cal socks, which I have finished, um, and I'll put a picture on screen. That, that was a really nice project because I was working a stripe every day of December, and that's kind of what gave me the idea to work a square every day. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's some lovely ones. This I dyed that one, that one, and then that was a part of a Greatest Showman set by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Um, that is by Kaylee of the York Makery. Really love that. Um, not sure. I think that one might be a Siobhan's Craft in the Adventure Time mini set. That one is definitely Game of Crafting. This one is one I dyed. This is from my Rainbow sets. Oh, hang on. This is where a load of yarn comes crashing down on my head. These are my rainbow sets. There are a few of these still left in my Etsy shop and more going in soon. And yes, yeah, so that is from that rainbow set. That is from that rainbow set. That yellow isn't. This orange that I'm putting in is also from the Greatest Showman set from Kay Jones. But yeah, it's just really nice. It's really nice to pick up. Um, I am not doing what a lot of people do which is work a big long strip and then add to that because I didn't want to ever be forced into having to work on a grey square this is what I'm picking up first thing in the morning and some days you wake up and you need a bit of bright colour to cheer you up and some days 
you don't need that. So you're happy just to work on something that is grey and whatnot. But by working this like a, it's like going to be like a mitered square type, not my corner to corner. It is a mitered square blanket. Well done, Liz. Uh, but yeah, it's like going to be a corner to corner. So I'm adding this and I'm adding here and then I'll be filling in. And that means I can always pick a colour because like here needs a square and that's going to be a grey one. This is tomorrow's square, which I've cast on. Um, I am casting on because if I don't, I am going to lose this central stitch marker. So every morning I finish a square and I cast one on. And it, it seems to be working, it seems to be working really well. It's the 3rd of January. Three days in a row, woohoo! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the here needs a grey one in here, but here needs a colour one, and at the end here needs a colour one. So for my next actual sort of, you know, whatever day it is, whatever I want to do, I can, um, yeah, pick whatever I like. So at the moment it's living in a bag, and um, I've just picked up some greys and some minis. Hello, boo. Ooh. Just show your bum to the screen. That's that's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I've just put a few minis in, and um, as I've used those, I'll put different ones in and whatnot. And I've yeah, but I got gifted quite a few lovely minis from Yarn Wishes at the end of last year, and I treated myself to some nice Christmas presents, as I said. So minis, I'm doing okay for. Um, I might give a shout out later in the year when I'm like, oh, I've used them all. But really I want it to be yarn that I have um, used in other projects and therefore it's very special to me. Um, the needles that I'm using are Addies. Um, this, I think it's a 60 centimetre cable. Yeah, because it's not quite long enough to do magic loop. This is how I judge things. And it's a 2.5 millimetre needle. Uh, I bought this special because I did have a Knit Pro, Knit Pro Nova, but I don't know if you've used the Knit Pro Novas, they tend to, the metal coating on them tends to rub off, and that was just rubbing on my fingers, and not not happy about that, so I got a new needle for that, mainly because I don't want it to have one of my interchangeable chow because it's going to be there for the whole year, and I don't want it all yet, sorry you're wobbling because Cal's behind um yeah i don't want to spend the whole year wondering where my 2.5 mil chowgo is and then think oh yeah it's on my mitered square blanket Hello. right oh i forgot to show you another thing the um i'm gonna keep calling it the austin sweater because that's what it looks like in my head but it is the Oster sweater, um, the Brooklyn Tweed one that I'm knitting for my friend Richard. I swatched for it. I know, gold star, hey? But what I actually did was I swatched the cable pattern and made it into a hat. Isn't this so nice? I absolutely love this cable pattern. When I, I bought the pattern and I printed it out and it's about 20 pages long and I was completely just like, <laughs> um yeah I was completely like there is no way I can do this no way it was it looked incredibly complex so what I just decided to do sorry do you want a, ca a cal and a hat no no that didn't work uh what I decided to do was just take the um cable pattern the cable chart and just knit a hat in that cable chart and I just completely fell in love with this cable chart. It is so intuitive. <laughs> she nearly fell off. Um, yeah, it's so intuitive. Um, I only did like four repeats, I think, to make this hat. I wish I'd done five, because it's one of those. I will put it on. Love it. Again, it's knit in the same drops in Nepal, but this is the sky colorway. It's a very pale blue gray. Really love it. But when you're walking along, I don't know if it's just my head or because I've got long straight hair that doesn't grip anything, it sort of raises up and you get your little ears sticking out. So I'm forever doing this just to keep my ears warm. Cal. Um, so it, need, it probably will need a little bit of surgery or it needs to go to someone with a slightly smaller head or some more sticky hair. Um, yeah, but 
I just I forgot to show you that and I really wanted to because this is the cable pattern that's going to be on that sweater and I absolutely love it and I may also be casting on another cable sweater for me at the same time because why not? Why not knit two massive cable sweaters at the same time? But yeah, if you got the last uh, Lane magazine, there is a cable sweater in there, a boxy cable sweater called the Ramsey, and I really, really want to knit it. So I'm just gonna... I love these cables. They're so nice. Okay. Yeah, so that... I think there's about four or five sweaters that I've kind of got already yarn for planned and I've got a fern and feather planned that's literally in the bag with the yarn and the needles and the pattern I just haven't cast it on and that's not a summer sweater it's a very much a winter sweater a really nice one um okay what's in here Ooh, some grey yarn um this is a pair of Woo! going everywhere how am I doing with time? I'll show you this and then I'll just do a little cut again while I can reset it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to cut some of this out because otherwise it's going to be really long. Um, yeah, this is one of, another one of my Christmas socks. It is a old traditional lace pattern and it is in yarn by... Oh gosh. Oh, I met her at Yarndale and I can't remember her name. Oh, that's so irritating. She's so lovely. No, it's gone out of my head. Is it in here? Oh, Dusty Dimples, of course. Dusty Dimples. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is going to be frogged. The yarn will be used again on another pair of Christmas socks, but this has not moved and is not going to move. So... I love it, I think the texture of the lace is really pretty, it's just not intuitive at all and every time I pick it up I'm like, where was I? What was I doing? Okay, and I knit about two repeats I'm like, oh this takes forever. Yeah, so no, that is definitely getting frogged. I'll put it there and i remember to do it. Okay, the other thing in this bag, ooh, it's a really nice red. Fairly sure I dyed that. I think it was going to be the cuffs, no the heels for that sock. Now it well it could still go with that yarn. Yeah. The other thing in this bag is the underwing mitts of which I have knit one. These are a gift. I haven't finished the thumb and I haven't kissed cast on the second. I'll put the pattern details on the screen because I can't remember who it's by. Is it Erica somebody? Um yep. These were stalled because I ran out of grey but I think that's covered and these are just ready to knit the second one. I'm just rummaging around in here because it's like so much stuff. Okay yep yeah, that is what is in there. That definitely needs to be finished soon because they are a gift and that gift needs to go out in January so on the ball with that one. Okay there is only technically three things left although these are three things. These are just literally hat brims, knit probably three years ago now, and they are literally just, literally, why do I keep saying literally, um, they're knit in drops again, um, it's a DK weight, although that one, oh gosh, that is on DPNs and it's going to fall apart. Wow. So this one has been knit in the round on DPNs and this is a James C. Brett yarn. Um, it is the DK with Merino and it's a nice sort of pale, sort of tweedy whatnot. Something needs to happen with that because it's literally on the needles. Don't know what. I think these were all going to be colour work hats so I was just doing the cuffs and then I would work out charts. Um, yeah. Hiya boo, come up then. Woo! Say hi. <laughs> oh, do I get a cuddle? Do I get a cuddle? Hi boo, oh. Oh, Cal's getting used to being an only cat. 
it's a bit I don't know how she's gonna take when we get the new cat coming in in uh, but it'll be March by then so she might be ready but yeah she's she's getting she's getting used to being an only cat I'm not I'm not used to being an only cat I like having more than one cat in my life um it's far, the, the, there is no chaos not enough chaos need more but yeah I have three brims of hats if Cal will let them go a orange, a mustard and a beige. These have been hanging around for, as I say, about three years. They are going to be colour work hats. I don't know. can't even remember the stitch count. I think it's one of those things where it's like it was a good idea at the time but now an awful lot of work has to go into the next step and I don't have a lot of motivation for that. But yeah. This was uh, warts and all showing all my whips, and technically these are whips. I mean, this, this is on the needles, for God's sake. Okay, another, what, another languishing whip has been shown on the podcast before. Um, it is on two DPNs, because I am not working on this currently, but I really need to. This is the start of my gloves for me. And this is a self-striping yarn that I dyed. I know I'm plugging the Etsy shop quite a bit at the moment, but I am currently going to be, um, currently going to be. Does that make sense? I have finally, since moving house, got my warping board working again. And uh, <laughs> uh, yesterday I warped out 300 grams of an eight striper. So I'm hoping to dye that later this afternoon and get some more on there. Currently I can, I. I can get up to a nine striper self striping yarn on my walking board but I have all the bits to extend that to a 14 striper and then I hope to make a better board that will go up to 24, 30 stripes 30 stripes, that would be awesome wouldn't it? You wouldn't even get all stripes on a pair of socks if you had 30 stripes but yeah, this is a yak sock uh, four ply yarn that I dyed as a self striping it's really nice sort of dual tones, it's going to be amazing gloves that I really want because it's cold and I want them but yeah I don't know why these have languished because they've languished for over a year now and they really need me to work on them I'm not saying I'm going to I don't I definitely need new hand warmers or gloves shout at me in the comments if you want me to work at the on these because I really need to Cal is now in the window chewing on some fairy lights if you want to know what she's doing um, If I move this water bottle she might turn around so we can actually see her She now thinks there's water in the water bottle Look at the sun on her, she's so pretty She's so pretty Maybe you're so pretty Cal Cal Okay last whip, oh my god um, yeah, but this basket is now empty and so Cal is going to live in it once she's made it smell like her by rubbing her face on it. Cal, do you live in this box now? Hi, do you live in the box? Here we go, we've got a Cal box. Sorry for the noise, but just enjoy it. We don't get Cal on the podcast very often, so uh, she's happy in the box. We'll leave her there. Yeah, last whip. This is another shawl, and with a very big pinch of salt, because I don't know if this is ever going to pan out to be anything. This is a design I am working on. Um, it is supposed to be a crescent shawl, but it's kind of boomeranging in its shape. It is garter and mohair lace in a feather and fan uh, with some drop stitches it's a really pretty combination i just not 100% sure i got the math right to start with and this will actually turn out what i need to do is just crack on and finish it see what happens when it's all blocked and if it doesn't have that right crescent shape um, it might just be that this isn't straight enough or long enough it's just sort of blipping up don't know. So definitely on the plan, in, in the plan, on the plan, 
on the plan. Is anyone listening to me? I mean, Cal's doing this. Hi. Hi. Do I smell nice? No. Um, yeah, I think that's the right way around. So I dyed this top yarn uh, to match this beautiful mohair, which is from Solstice Yarns. I think it was the winter colorway that I got for Christmas, the Christmas 2019. Um, and then there's a little bit of Ducky Darlings in the truffle colorway in here, which I've been using for the drop stitches and it just turns in perfectly. I want this as a thing, definitely, so it needs to be finished. There is no way I can put this in this basket. This has got mohair in it, it'll get ripped to shreds. So yeah, that is all of my whips. Absolutely all of them. Wait a minute. It's not all of them. The crochet has disappeared. I'm fairly sure me looking around isn't going to help me find the crochet. It was in a bag like this, or my house bag. It's not, it's not essential you see the crochet. There will be a lot more crochet coming up. What I am currently working on at the moment is another of my gauntlets, my infinity gauntlets from, um, inspired by um, the Thanos character in the Marvel films. Um, it is pretty much what I am most known for. Do I have a picture? Oh yeah. Here you go. Yeah, so I designed this um, crochet pattern whew, three years ago now, and it has been my most popular cr uh, crochet pattern ever. Um, it is all over the internet, Was uh, became a meme, um, and um, was even retweeted by Robert Downey Jr., who is Iron Man himself. Awesome. Uh, yes, and I sell the pattern, I sell kits to make it, I have a crochet pattern to make, as, not a crochet pattern. Mm. I have a knitting pattern as well that I released this year, so if you don't crochet but you want to make it, you can knit. Um, this is the knitted version, which you can get a kit of two. So yeah, I also sell these custom made. Um, they are expensive because it takes me a long time to make them, and um, but yeah, from time to time I get people who will buy a custom made one, and at the moment that is, what, is what's happened. And so I have one of those on the hooks. And that is pretty much all I am crocheting at the moment. Cal did get some toys crocheted for her over Christmas. And one of the first things I'm going to be working on in, in the new year, it is the new year, is a, um, a, a, like, a, I'm going to be working on some crochet eco kits. So things like reusable um, cat toys. You know, making your own cat toys rather than ones that are full of lots of plastics and lots of fibres that cats... Mm, yeah, I don't know. Some of the things that are in some of the cat toys, I, I worry about them digesting. So, yeah, I'm going to get natural and bleached cotton. I'm going to be making up some cat toys and, um, yeah, and then I'll be releasing patterns and I'll also be releasing kits. So I think that'll be a really interesting thing to do. Um, yeah, and there'll be uh, other things along that line. I'm going to be doing, like, wash sets and stuff like that. Not for cats. Don't wash your cats. They can clean themselves. They're fine. But yeah, so yeah, there is lots of things like that coming along. More crochet will happen, but just yeah, all my whips are just like everywhere now. Okay, so before I go, um, things that are coming up. I'll be back in a week on Wednesday, my normal podcasting time with a normal episode, episode twelve. Um. Yeah, let's hope for nice weather because the light today has been absolutely beautiful. Can you see it on my ficus? Woo! Um, Cassie bags. This is the only one I have left that is made up. Um, these are, I have been making these, you know, as a memorial in a way to my lovely Cassie who we lost um, last year. Um, there is a memorial piece of art that is being created for her that I'm not going to keep it in the studio because it'll, it won't, I just won't see it as much in the studio. Um, but it, yeah, it, so that's going to be a piece of art glass um, by a company um, called from John Ditchfield um, or Glassform. I don't know if you've heard of it. They are quite popular and absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, so that that is going to be on the way. 
Um, so yeah, so this is what these are raising money towards to support the podcast, to support that, to support getting the new Bengal co-host kitten. Although Cal did a pretty good job today. I think I think we need to yeah get Cal on the podcast a bit more often. I think she did well. She's currently behind the camera, not rattling the camera, so she's doing all right. So yeah, Cassie bags. I will put a picture of all the different colours on the screen. There are bees, robins, the yellow fabric that I have. I, I love this fabric. Um, the wooden trees fabric. Um, they're all natural linen. They are all lined with unbleached cotton. They are heavy duty. Um, they have zips. They have tags which are removable. They have the very special handmade Cassie tags which have the heart on. You also have the option of getting them with the little heart shaped beaded stitch markers that I have hand beaded and inside they have pockets and lots of room. Probably not enough room for a fading point five skein shawl but lots of room. So yeah they are in my Etsy shop, they will be in the Knitting Notions section. My Etsy shop can be a bit overwhelming because there are so many crochet patterns in it but if you use those section tags it makes everything a lot easier. The other thing that is going in there is some stitch markers. It will probably be next week and I will put on Instagram when they are going in. I have, they are lurking under here quite a lot of different ones going in but the ones that I'm really excited about um, I can't really show, I just pulled them into my hand and then realised I can't actually show you to you hand show they're like little hexagons can you see I've got them in a few different colours they're really nice, I'm currently using them on my fading point shawl and they are really nice I've also got some stars, there might be a few Game of Thrones Harry Potter themed ones, we'll see what I actually get. Um, but yeah, I will get all those listings up and they will all be on also in the Knitting Notion section of my Etsy shop, Ami Garami Barmy. The other thing is that I will be dyeing some yarn. There will be some self-striping going in at some point. Hopefully, I want to do this all hopefully as one big update, so the Cassie bags you can get now, they are on pre-order, they will be made, when you buy one it will be made specially for you and it will be shipped as soon as I have finished making it but most of them are shipped fairly quickly so far. Um, when those listings sell out there will be no more because I, yeah, I, I can't, there isn't any more fabric that I can get. That, that I could always make different fabrics but these are the ones I've chosen for this and I'm properly waffling on now. So yeah, there will be a update of self-striping yarn and also I'm going to clear out what I have left of my old um, Liz's Hallway Yarn Company yarns that I have left. So I've got some DKs, I've got some really nice sock yarns, some really bright colours, um, but I will put all those up and share them and then yeah. So yeah. Thank you for watching, uh, thank you uh, for coming back and watching if you've watched this podcast before, sorry for the break, there won't be quite so long a break next year, she said touch wood or touch whatever Ikea's version of wood is. Uh, so enough rambling or waffling on as this podcast is, uh, da -da -da -da. no really can't do words today. Uh, if you watch this to the end, thank you very much. Um, thank you for continuing to watch and support this podcast. It means an incredible amount to me. It's not an easy thing to do to, you know, talk to a screen uh, when you're on your, on your own. Um, yeah. So there, yeah, these are all my whips that um, I have to work on uh, in 2020 plus all the new things that I will cast on. I am not gonna lie there will be lots of new cast-ons this year. I have seen so many pretty things. But yeah, I will be back on a week on Wednesday for episode 12 and I'll see you then. Bye!